Oh, yeah. right. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. Use hand sanitizer. Let's Dude. make it work, y'all. We we um <laughs> we here. I'm not really here, but we here. <laughs> we here. Um, community coalition show again. If you're watching this, you, you should know. You are in, you know the vibes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> What's going on with you? Uh, I. I'm not exhausted, but also, I mean, it's more of the whole, I'm kind of done with like everything. So I'm just not worrying about it type thing. Yeah, no, I feel you. I think, I think that's, yeah, that's where it is. I, I, that's, that's pretty much what I'm on now. Yeah, I have to worry about it. So it's like part of my job, but. <laughs> oh, right. No, but I feel you because like, I, it's like we consume, we can only consume so much. Like we can only watch so much and form an opinion on yeah. certain on so much. It's like, oh, this thing happened. Oh, and then five minutes later, this thing happened. I can't keep up with all of this. I can't worry about all of it. I yeah. can't give energy to all of this. That's really. Yeah, well, that's the thing. The energy, I think, I think it's also too like, really sorting through what's worth it exactly you know like sometimes this stuff don't be like there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of it's not worth information it. and news that people create news and right that's not worth it so i mean we're here yep um we are post-election let's mind well just get this out the way yep everybody joe biden won no one joe kamala won so again got it shout outs to oh shout out to the bay Oh. Biden, shout out to um, you know, President elect Joe. Shout out to um, Vice President elect Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's a big deal for a lot of people. You know, it is. Um, I'm not going to diminish what that was. And I think first and foremost, you know, getting the orange dude up out of there. Yep. Like, and I think everything that my my thing with well, my thing with that is like. Mm -hmm. This is the one thing I've been hearing the last couple of weeks. People, you know, like people so focused on the presidency. They're so focused on mm -hmm. orange, right? <laughs> but it's right. everything to me. It's like everything that comes along with right. that. It's almost like, um, what's the best way I can put it? You know, like you got a relationship. Mm -hmm. You the significant other, your girl, or whatever. Right. Y'all to move in together or y'all to spend enough time together. Y'all bought each other gifts. It's it's you you know, family, you to met the fam, the fam mm -hmm. likes her, and y'all break up. Or she was abusive in the mug and she was cheating or something, you, you gotta get rid of it, right? Right. But it's like it's not just the cutoff there. Right. Now you gotta sort through take your stuff or give me my stuff back. Right. Friends. Friends, you got mutual friends now, um, so it's like you got that air. Moms um, might have liked her, so right. it's like. But when I look at stuff like this, I look at it like it's not just the breakup, the initial breakup. It's everything that comes along with it. You know, <laughs> when it comes to, when it comes down to like the presidency, it's like yeah, we getting rid of him, but everybody, everything that comes along with the administration. Mm -hmm. And to me, we had to clear all that out. We got to gut all that stuff out. Right. I'm not saying. I'm not gonna sit here and say that like Joe Biden is the answer, the end all, be all, and all this stuff. I'm not doing all that. No. So if we all know the truth. It takes way more than this. Mm -hmm. But what this did was hopefully get us in a direction, starting to clean that stuff out. Right. You know, like I gotta give you, you got, I want my hoodie back. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I know you, want to go, you know, take the builder bear. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> like all that stuff, we uh, got to talk about so look it's at always the, there's always a build a bear. There's always a build a bear. Go ahead and take a little build a bear. So I don't need it around here no more. You know, go ahead and take mm. that little 15. You know, I know it's sentimental. You can have that. I do want my hoodie back though. You're not getting that hoodie yeah. back, bro. I'm gonna press forward. I'm gonna try. Right. There might be a couple extra text messages after it's all over, like. Mm -hmm. And then you see you see her on social media with the joint on. You're like, oh, that's petty. Like, so you gotta sort through all that. 
you know, like yeah. so it's clean. And then, and then now we got we got the chick who don't want to leave. That's mm. not one you don't want to leave. He gonna fight. So we gotta go through all this now. Like, <laughs> oh, listen, you just gotta you just gotta throw him out the house. Yeah, you gotta kick her out. You don't want to call the cops on her. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you don't want to get loud the neighbors. You don't want the neighbors to hear all this. But you got, you know, we got to get, get up out of here. Right. Over. But also, that's going to happen. <laughs> Is she crazy? <laughs> you crazy, you know. Yeah. Want, yeah. It's going to happen. Is she crazy? Right. You had that crazy chick that you fell in love with. So for everybody, yeah. Yeah. But that crazy chick. This is why kind of Man. You're going to miss her. Chick. Yeah, because she, she had, yeah, she, she had that bomb, though. But not in this case, though. <laughs> Everything was trash. I wasn't even going there. <laughs> no, I'm going there today. You know, you're going to get so, Wow. Um, but it was trash. The whole relationship was trash. Right. This is one of No, it's not even that the relationship was trash. The, 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 if we're being real, the relationship was toxic. But, yeah, all that. All that. But, like, this is one of those times where it's like, you end up, like, you, like, six months in, like, how... How how I hold up? Wait, like, how did this happen? How she she here? <laughs> what she never been? <laughs> and you looking around like, slow. You slowly start looking at all your stuff and, and go on. Really into the relationship, like, start looking around, being all like, why did to why did my yeah. box? I'm just, what happened to my swords? Like, like she was <laughs> here, like. <laughs> Crazy now you realizing how crazy she is. It's mad mm-hmm. toxic. Y'all fighting all the time. It's abusive. Mm-hmm. You know, so you do is that this is what like you're so relieved that she is gone. <laughs> like, oh, oh my god, I need my life back. Right. Why does she keep popping back up? She won't stop texting you. Right. She but also playing, she playing games on IG, like. <laughs> right, but also I've never been in this situation to where I had a toxic ex, so I not cannot. Yet. I'm not. not I can't speak to this. Not yet. We're gonna have this. Hopefully call. not ever. It's been happened, you know, like so much of. Hopefully it. not ever. Yeah, I'm not gonna speak it on you, but <laughs> I don't yeah. want it. We never, we never want it. The <laughs> thing is happening. No, like but I like said, also, but also like you see it like when you see your homeboys, and it's like you know this girl is not good for you. It's like and that's what happens. Like, you, like it it happens to the best of us, y'all. <laughs> I don't know. You might have met her at the club, met her at the spot, or a friend. You know, and you didn't know exactly like what she was on. So, yeah. well, that's the one joint. Like, <laughs> like you just having you trying to be nice, right? Trying to be friendly. Try to try to take it to a thousand. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I'm not trying to do all that tonight. I'm just trying yeah, to chill. Like, she texts, hey, and she texts like, oh, we go together now. Like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and don't let her be hey with more with more than one why. <laughs> <laughs> or don't, don't, just, don't be nice. Like sometimes you nice. Like, what's going on? You good? And then they take that as, oh, we're in relationship. Like. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Like, this, this is such a dysfunctional situation. So, America, Black America, we, we got we, out of a toxic, we, we, out we of got out of a toxic relationship. Yeah. Relationship. Now, we just got to get rid of all of the friends. That's the thing. Come so around. We got, we got friends, we got the baggage, all of them, because they still try and hang. Right. But no, I'm not going to brunch with you. Because <laughs> he you knows he's bound to show up. <laughs> and that's the back of setup. <laughs> you put them up to it. You put them up to it like, hey, see if you're willing to roll, and then you show up, and then ten minutes later, she stepped in, like, hey, you're like, oh, you just set me up. That's that's some trash. Like, mm. okay, I watch way too much TV to like actually know about this. <laughs> There's way too much life to actually know about this. Man, <laughs> that part. Um, but this is <laughs> like, yeah. Um, we gotta get rid of it. We gotta get rid of it. Mm-hmm. So we'll start this process, and and now we got the new one. We got new boo. We don't we don't really know. You know, we mm-hmm. we known her from before. She was with my man. Like, 
friends. You know, like, Yo, oh my gosh, we can't do this. No, we have to. We have to do this metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> but, but also this this is gonna go way deeper because this is the homegirl that like this is your, this is your this is your boy's ex girl like I'm saying like and they might not have been together together <laughs> but you know uh, this is <laughs> So and then it took one night. You was like, "Damn, you know what she got?" It's like, "Oh, she's kind of bad. She's kind of cool. She kind of cool." She kinda it cool. always starts off like she cool. She real cool. You know what I'm saying? Then like, start texting. Your girl still being toxic. The old one's still around. You still kind of texting. And then when your friends ask, she'd be like, "Oh, that's the homie." Yes, yeah, it's just the homie right there. That's the homie. You know. <laughs> and they looking at you like, "Yeah, all right. <laughs> we know." And then all of a sudden, you get rid of the toxic joint, and she know it. So she like, "Hey, you trying to hang?" You like, "I ain't got nothing else to do." Cool. And next thing you know, now y'all together, mm. and everybody's happy that y'all together because they they couldn't wait for you to get rid of the old. One. So everybody's yeah. happy like that. It's still the honeymoon. It's the new period. Yeah. The old chick found out. Now she mad. <laughs> she hating. You send off a bunch of tweets. Brought, you, know, <laughs> you know, she didn't already text her trying to try and break it up. Like, right. you know, so I wasn't, I wasn't with you anyway. Yeah, you know, you know, all that little big I was I was talking to Russia. Yeah, I was, you know, <laughs> I was talking to Russia the whole time. <laughs> the whole time anyway. <laughs> I'm about to slide over there once yeah. this once this quarantine is over. <laughs> All that. So here we are, yo. Here we are. Quarantine. I mean, sorry, Russia about to take care of me. Yeah, Russia got me. You know, Russia about to get me the burger. Right. Russia about to get the burger. <laughs> Not the burger. Right. You had that. Go ahead, go with Russia. Because Russia's mad abusive. Hey, I'm happy for you. Russia's toxic too. Also, to quote, happy, bless to quote, to quote a great man, y'all won. <laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all got it. Like, where are you going? Oh, man. <laughs> hey, me and new chick over here about to be good. <laughs> I'm going to see how that goes. Oh, man. Be- I, I sound toxic now. Yeah, look, this man. is the whole thing. This is the... This is... It's a whole nother topic. This is a whole country of toxic right now. <laughs> Can you imagine we just described our country as a toxic relationship, right? Because it is. It is. Like we Yo. throwing money over here, we're throwing money over here. Like, we got yeah, we're throwing money at this chick, we're throwing money at this chick. Yeah, we we, we got mad side chicks we all over the way. Single for a minute. <laughs> no, um, it's like you, it's the whole ludicrous line. We got different hoes in different area codes. Yeah, we did for a minute. We did. You know, no, we, it's still going. I know it's still going. Well, now we, we we got the new chick right now. You know, we got we got a new chick. We're gonna see what happens. Give it six months. You know, we're gonna see. We ain't gotta give it six months. Give, give it two. two. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. Yeah. By about we, we're gonna know. Probably about March. We're gonna know <laughs> if we gonna if we gonna commit or you see the crazy. Yeah, we're gonna we gonna see by about March. Maybe April. Yeah, the weather starts turning. There's gonna be one thing where she goes off and <laughs> it's like you're not gonna think about it, but like once stuff starts popping off, it's gonna you're gonna go back to that moment and be like, I should have saw that as a red flag. Yeah. <laughs> we might we might have seen the red flags, but you know, we've been so we 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 we're coming out of trauma with the last one. Sometimes you don't see it. You're just so happy to be out of a toxic situation if you don't see the the, the toxicity, the new one. I really hope that yeah. we gave. I really hope we gave this episode our new chick. <laughs> we got you. because I, this is not how I wanted this one. It's a totally different plan, but um, work. Don't roll with it. Yeah, new chick. New chick. <laughs>
call it new chick. New chick, who this? New chick, who this? <laughs> oh, That's how everybody acting. So, okay. All right, so here we are. Mm-hmm. We got Joe, we got Kamala. Right. Orange is still tripping. Um, Not true. A lot of people are really excited. Um, like we said, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to keep even keel about it for real. Right. I'm happy. I'm, yeah. I'm more happy about it because Joe's an actual politician that's been in a presidential uh, position to where he knows how things function and how things work. Yeah. So I'm yeah. more confident about that. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's it's crazy. I mean, we were at a point not that long ago where it was like people were over politicians, traditional politicians. Right. But I think we need somebody with the experience on how to clean this up. Right. You know, was I was I talking to you? Speaking of metaphors, was I giving you the sports metaphor in this one? I think so. The quarterback yeah. one. Uh, maybe. Was maybe. I talking to? Well, I said okay. This this was this was my first impression. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, we're coming off. Obama was like the Hall of Fame quarterback. Mm-hmm. He was putting up numbers. He was winning championships, mm-hmm. but he had to retire. He got old. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we had to get. We we went and got you this had, agent, this hothead. Right. And he's trash. Franchise yeah. plummeted. We struggled. There's, right there's, now. there's a reason he was a free agent. We had we got an zero and sixteen season with him, you know it's not working. Oh, no, my man is wild, uh, and we are spending so much. Yeah, we're tanking for two. Uh, we struggling at this point. Like, so then you know we got the first round draft pick. Mm. First round draft pick. So we're like we drafted the quarterback right now, you know. Right. But but the season hasn't started yet. Yeah, no, no, no. Before we draft the quarterback, we got the we got the free agent holdover. Mm-hmm. Joe but Joe Biden is like the free agent holdover. He's like the Ryan Fitzpatrick. <laughs> you almost said Joe Biden. Said, yeah. oh. He's been um, wilding on the timeline too, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, um, but Joe Biden is like your Ryan Fitzpatrick. Mm. He's your free agent holdover. He gonna win. He might win you a couple games. Mm-hmm. He might lose you a couple games. Right, but he going he going coach he going you know keep you in a good space. Right, until we get that first round pick, mm-hmm. until we get our tour, until right. we get one of them guys. That's how I kind of look at this. Right, like hold us hold us down, brighten the ship a little bit, get us back mm-hmm. at least five hundred. Right, so get us back <laughs> to five hundred because right now we like zero and sixteen. <laughs> so if you can get us back to five hundred, that's respectable at this point. Mm-hmm. You know, like franchise gonna start looking up again. Right. Everybody's gonna be optimistic. We're gonna start getting a couple more. Get, get a better, get some better draft picks. We'll get some better draft some free picks. agents. Yeah, until until we get our our franchise quarterback. Right. You know what I'm saying until we get that franchise, we got to start scouting. We got to start looking for that franchise quarterback. Right. But right now, we got a guy that's gonna hold us over. Mm-hmm. Get him a couple year contract. You know, this yeah. won't be. Get us back to five hundred. He knows he knows how to run the offense. Right. He got the four year. Yeah. He yeah. He's experienced. Right. You know he's Ryan Fitzpatrick. Mm-hmm. That's what Joe Biden is. He's Ryan. Mm-hmm. He he's was been around. He's a veteran. Right. You know. You know what? I actually I <laughs> and I hate to use this player, but he, I, in a way he's our uh, Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, I wouldn't even call him Colin. I wouldn't give him. I wouldn't give him that because he's been around. He's a journeyman, right? You know, Colin. I don't know who Colin will be equated to, but I was. I gave this. Actually, gave this thought, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Who's the journeyman quarterback? Bounces from team to team. Mm-hmm. He's been on some winning teams. He might not have been right. the guy, but he was on a winning team. But he's he's held he's holding it over, right? Just like with the Dolphins, he held it over till they got to it." Mm-hmm. The Dolphins were like, I appreciate you, fam. <laughs> but we about to bring their franchise in. Right. You held us down. You got us good. But it's time for the franchise to come in. Two was right. And I feel like that's what we need as a country right now. 
Mm-hmm. We need that franchise player. Yeah, just write the ship a little bit. And then next election, mm-hmm. hopefully the franchise is sitting right there. Right. That's going to be the first round pick. We're going to we're gonna have to find that guy. He's still in mm-hmm. college right now. You know, he's putting up numbers right now. Right. And that's going to be our pick. But for right now, we got to, we got to, we got to hold him over with this better. We got to get this better. And then there. he's going to run our offense. You know, we'll get some new core. We're going to get a new coordinator for him. Right. But we're planning for the franchise to come in. So that's where America is to me. Right. So we, don't, also, we don't need, we don't need. Also, to- speaking of sports, I see that you're wearing your shirts. Oh, yeah. You, you the, is it, is it, are those the eight no? Eight, uh, eight, eight, no, really? Of course. Okay. No. Oh, man. Don't get me <laughs> um, You know what? And I, <sighs> yes, this is appropriate for the show. <laughs> I am a Steelers fan, and we're going to bounce all over the place today because I don't really care. Um, right. I am so frustrated as a Steelers fan right now. <laughs> because, not because of their play. I don't care about mm-hmm. that Cowboys game. Every team has a close game. It's the NFL. But every time I like I read the comments, I go on like Twitter, I go on Instagram, and I read the comments at the Steelers games from Steelers fans, mm-hmm. and they dog our coach Mike Tomlin, mm. they dog this man out. Like they treat him like he's the worst coach ever. When he's probably actually one of the best <laughs> coaches, one of the coaches ever. Right. He's never had a losing season. Mm. All this man does is win. But if you read the comments, no what? Fans, mm. they treat him like like they talk about him like he's like Owen Owen eight, right? And it's like that every year. So I've been annoyed. I've been really annoyed since yesterday. <laughs> um, I don't I don't I know why. We know why. Mm. If Mike Tomlin was white. Mm-hmm. They would be talking about him as a Hall of Famer, right? He would. He's won championships. Never had a losing season. His team is eight and zero right now. They're always in the hunt. Right. Mike Tomlin was white. They would be looking at him like, who, who's, who's been he, – he's better than most of his contemporaries in the sport right now. Right. Belichick probably being a better one. Belichick, you know, that's Belichick. Right. But I'm trying to figure out how many other coaches in the league right now are as good as him. But a man gets no love. That, that frustrates me. And Steelers fans, I'm like, what are y'all talking about? Who, who's better? Mm. Who are you going to bring in there that's better? I got, you know, stuff like that, especially when you talk about like sports and black. It grinds your gears. It does. It does. Because we don't have many black coaches. Come on. There are very, very few black administrators, you know, um, Mm -hmm. I was, you know, general managers and stuff. We have no owners. Right. In sports, Um, period. And we can't give people, they like give the man his credit. You know, we can do it with players. Players get credit every now and then. Mm-hmm. But once you start moving up the ladder, it's like the leash is so short. But like, right. and that's why I kind of, I'm, I'm a Steelers fan for a couple reasons like this, because the Steelers stick by people. The Steelers have only had three coaches. Right. They don't give up on people so quick. Mm-hmm. Especially when it comes to coaches, they, they let my man work. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's part of the reason why I do like the Steelers. You know, because they've been a stand-up organization for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, and they stand behind They stand behind them, you know, right. where, you know, other franchises don't do stuff like that. So I am. Send, send off one bad sweep. It could yeah. all be over. Yeah, I'm saying like, I don't know. So I'm just, this is where I've been the last couple of days between all this election stuff, this post-election stuff, mm-hmm. you know, just I don't know. I've, I've been really like, I've been really frustrated with some things, man. Right. Um, I was watching this, and I know I'm bouncing around, but again, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to do too much election stuff. Right. We see it. We know it. Um, right. let's, let's talk about it. Like I said, let's have this conversation in March and see where we at. <laughs> um, let's do it. <laughs> I was watching, and this, like, even like music stuff. So I was watching this interview. Mm-hmm. I did a couple of interviews, as a matter of fact. Um, we're like, even in the, um, the music industry, mm-hmm. harder. I just feel like the music industry, it frustrates me because it's like, there's too many culture vultures. There's too many people that come in and break our culture. Right. Um, and they, they eat off of it, they benefit off of it. It's always like, 
even in interviews, right? It's always negative. So like, I watched the artist, I'm not gonna say who, go on a radio show with people that didn't look like him. He was a black artist and all the people that were interviewing him didn't look like him, even though it was a hip hop radio show mm. and grill him about everything other than music. It's talking about everything yeah. other than music. Yeah, that's and they what. Him, and they grilled him and you could tell he was like visibly frustrated because it's like, he clearly was trying to promote an album. Right. And you could tell probably his managers, his team, they, you know, they go on like these, these press runs. Right. But this is probably a schedule stop on a press run. So he's thinking he's going to talk about his album. And they get up there, they bring it up all types of stuff on his past, stuff he said. They're like, I'm sick of this. Like, when, you know, we don't have to be negative towards everyone. Right. Not all pre- press doesn't have to be negative, right? You don't have to be negative, mm-hmm. you know. Even in entertainment, even in music, like, well, I don't know why we do that. And it's I, I like, it's like Kenny, I'm it's like you're dropping an album, and it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but what do you put on your pancakes in the morning? It wasn't even that, it was like, <laughs> oh, baby mama said this, this, and this, and you were slapping her and stuff, like, like, wow. <laughs> Nothing had to do with that conversation. Wow. It was that's what the stuff they were taking it to. Yeah, that's that's back, wow. back in 2015. You said this, this, and that. Really? I don't even remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. You're asking me about something in 2015. <laughs> People make mistakes, but like it was always like it, to me, I was watching, and I've seen this a couple of times where it's like, I'm uncomfortable watching this because I could feel them tearing this black man down. Mm-hmm. And absolutely. And this is a young black man who he was struggling to keep it in. He was struggling to keep it together. Mm-hmm. Where men at that point, like, I don't care who you are, that's enough to, to take away your professionalism. You know what I'm saying? He about to say right. something to pop off. And it felt like they were just poking him. Mm-hmm. They were just poking him, trying to provoke him, trying to get him to say something. And I'm like, this is dirty, man. Right. This is dirty. And we don't have to do this. Part of the reason why I like interviewing people on this show. Mm-hmm. And I tell everyone before they come on, this is about you. Everything right. here is positive. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to say anything to put you in a negative light. Right. That's not what we're about here. Mm-hmm. We always ask, is there anything that you don't want to talk about? Yeah, let me know. I, we don't have to take it there because there's yeah. so many other things we can talk about. Right. And at the end of the day, we're human. I never want to judge anyone. I will never want to put somebody out there because that's mm-hmm. not what we're supposed to be doing to each other. We're supposed to be lifting each other up educating people yeah. and letting, just letting people know about like you. Yeah. So all these like, like we're here to promote you. That's what it's supposed to be about. So that's what I'm like. So I don't know. I feel like that's got to change and I just don't like it. And I'm like, stop sending our artists to these places. Right. Stop, stop booking these shows with these, these vultures, mm-hmm. these people that are not really for us. They're using their platform to rape our culture. Absolutely. You know, that's what it's all about. Yeah, they got radio outlets and stuff, but like, don't rock with them. And on the flip side, so like today I was in the car and I just happened to turn on the radio. Mm-hmm. But you know, we don't want, listen to the radio anymore. And I mean, like, I, I do a little bit. I, do but sometimes, but like, I try to, but also like they play the same song, same three songs yeah. over, over and over. Yeah, well, actually, I was in the whip with the aux cord was down, you know, having mm-hmm. issues with the aux cord. Oh, yeah, that's right. Of course. <laughs> so I turned on and I was so happy to listen to Donnie Simpson. Mm. I don't know in DC, Donnie Simpson is a legend. Um, he used to be back in B, he used to do video soul back on BE2, back when they would show videos. Yeah. On local radio here. And Donnie Simpson is the one most one of the most respected people in the music industry. And he's I've never heard him say anything negative about somebody in an interview. Mm. Talk to people, it's always love. People love him, respect him. It's never bringing people down and tearing people down. But I got a chance to listen to him down. I was like, this is kind of refreshing. You know, it might have been a little old schoolish, mm-hmm. but it was positive. Right. They laughed and joked about certain situations, but the whole tone of everything was positive. Right. And when he talks to people, when he interviews someone, it's never about, tell me about the, the, the tea, or tell me about, you know, what you're doing crazy, like, it's always about the music, the album, what you got going on. Like, it's good to see you. Right. 
And so for me, that was a good example. I had to listen to to me. I had I had to listen to that because it reminded me that yeah, there's still good media, good honest, good positive media outlets out there. Right. You don't always have to be like so before you uh, before you made it big, you were selling crack, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I'll say it. I'm just going to Oh, and you were cooking it too, right? You said that in this song, this certain yeah. line. <laughs> I'm going to say it. it, it at this point. I was, the last interview I watched was an interview with Kodak Black. Mm. And he went on Hot 97. It was like Ebro and them. I thought yeah. so. And when he walked out. And mm. I was glad he walked out of that interview. Mm. They asked him about the, the allegations. They asked him what he said about the um because apparently a couple of years ago he he thought he said he thought the Mars moon landing was fake. Mm. They asked him about all this stuff. He didn't even remember half that stuff. I'm like, I'm like, why are you asking him what he thinks about the Mars moon landing? Who cares? Who cares? You wouldn't ask another white dude about that. Like. Because one, first of all, there's a lot of people that think that. That's one of those popular conspiracy theories. Right. But like, just because it's Kodak Black, like, stop trying to poke this man and say something crazy. Right. Stop trying to make other people look stupid. And that's what they were trying to do. So I'm watching Ebro, who, not part of our culture. Right. Not part of our culture. I don't know what culture. I've I've, I've heard the stories. I've heard some stories. Literally, it's, yeah. it's three. It's three. Like three white dudes. Mm-hmm. And this is what happens when you go on Night Hot 97 that shows. Three white dudes trying, trying to talk about our culture. Right. I don't care where you think you grew up, I don't care where you think you're from. You, you're not. You're not. But then, so mm-hmm. I, I thought, again, as I started thinking about it, I'm like, managers, people, stop doing this to our artists. Like, right. I'm pretty sure Kodak didn't call him up, was like, yo, I'm trying to be on the show. Somebody else did that. That was part of a run. Yeah, press run. Yeah. Stop setting up people like in the in the, that's that's I don't know I just that was just, it just seemed so dirty to me it seemed so wrong mm-hmm. like uh, and we wonder why for a couple of things one people are, are banking off of our culture right raping our culture like stop putting them in those situations mm-hmm. like get them up out of there they should have a show right stop sending people up there mm-hmm. don't get, you know they won't have nothing yeah also we need to. First off, I know there's this whole like media, like there's this whole thing about artists like being media trained and all that, but like there are a lot of artists now that aren't media trained. So, not, yeah, I mean, but like, we're human at the end of the day, right? Right. And I know there's a lot of media training, mm-hmm. but then sometimes stuff is just emotional. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and even as he said it, like at the end, you know, like, so, oh, I've, I've read a comment like, you don't know what happened with that situation. Mm-hmm. Some of the situations people been in. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, it's almost like you gotta stay, you gotta know what you're talking about. But also people, you don't know sometimes stuff is hard for people to deal with. Right. And or I know a lot of interviews too, a lot of times that you know it's discussed mm-hmm. or pre-planned at least of what's gonna be discussed. Right. Sometimes that, that already happens. So you go in thinking one thing and then they flip the switch on you too. Right. So you go in thinking, I'm about to discuss my album or my mm-hmm. project. And now you 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 asking me about what I thought about the the moon landing. What? Like sometimes that throws people off. Yeah. So like so that that little bait and switch game, all that stuff happens too. So you can prepare, but sometimes sometimes things strike a chord. Right. You know, and and that's that's I don't know, right? I just feel like they are gonna do what they do because they try to rape the culture. Right. We have to be more responsible about what we giving these people. Mm-hmm. Stop giving them the fuel. Stop giving them the ammo. Right. Especially you know? since like we need to stop. I, I hate to say this, but like we need to stop chasing a moment. Yeah, but but they but they they're setting up for it. They want the moment. Yeah. We have to know early on who's who. We got to start identifying who's who. Right. Who's for us and who's not for us. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think that show, that media outlet is for us. Right. When you and also, stop, like you said, uh, stop. we got to stop going to these places. That's what I'm saying. So when we start knowing that show, they ain't gonna, they're not going to do right by us. 
Mm-hmm. All they all they want is sound bites and clips and make us look crazy so they can profit off of it. Right. No, we don't go here. We have we have a choice. Mm-hmm. We don't go there. We're gonna we're gonna go see Donnie. We're gonna go see Donnie's mm-hmm. picture. Right. You know, Donnie will give us a good, honest interview. He's gonna promote us, he's gonna show love. Right. People ask questions that are gonna help promote what we're doing, make right. us look in a good light. Go there. Or we're gonna go to Nick Kenny. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like there's there's places we we and they know. Mm-hmm. They know. So stop, stop doing this. I, I, just, I don't know. As the older I get, and especially things like social media, I scroll through and I see some of these things, and I'm like, no, man, no, stop, no. We, we, you. We, you know, we have to do better with this stuff, y'all. We do. Um, and the artists got to, you know, sometimes I don't know. I know there's a lot part planned into that. I know there's a lot of machines behind a lot of these artists. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Is it something we got to do better at? I don't have the whole right. thing yet. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of money behind this yeah. one specific person. Let's put it. Let's put the money towards not really like toxic, toxic uh, radio interviews. Let's put it towards like having good in- radio interviews. Yeah. Or and, and, let's and the people forget respond. the radio. <laughs> yeah. well, when, I mean, radio, whatever interview, people will respond. Mm-hmm. And I think they keep doing this because people keep watching it. Right. But if you spoon, spoon, you know, spoon feed, uh, I can't mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> give somebody something enough, of course, they're going to start digesting. Right. They're going to start eating it. They're going to want more. Right. So give them something different. That's what I'm saying. Like black media, mm-hmm. we have a control over what we give people. Right. If we start showing our people in a positive light, maybe they'll start they'll start looking for that. Right. One thing I've seen over the, over the weekend is how the world is viewing Kamala Harris. Mm-hmm. I just saw a picture of her. That she got her own doll right now. Mm-hmm. Everyone's happy for this woman. From Howard University, HBCU, where she went to, mm-hmm. women all across the world, black people, mm-hmm. they're viewing her, they're promoting her in a positive light. Right. Everything is positive right now. Mm-hmm. It can be done. It can be done. Okay. So, like, I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is a wonderful thing. This is dope. This is what we need to be seeing. Mm-hmm. Why can't we take this same energy? and move that in other facets of our culture. Right. We can, we can, y'all. So I, we see it. We see this. That was the prime example I saw this weekend. Like, everything is love. Every, we're yeah. showing her in the positive light, like, as it should be. Mm-hmm. But there's other people out there that we, we can do this for too. Right. So, this stuff has been, yeah, talk about grinding my gears. This stuff has been. <laughs> and I don't know if it's just because I'm tired. And you know, right. like, I feel things differently when you start getting tired. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm the start one. getting frustrated, start getting a little irritated. Yeah, because I just, I just, there's so many opportunities for us to just, we can do better. Right. And, and we don't have to sell out. Mm-hmm. And we, we're seeing examples of all these positive things this weekend. Right. And I just, I just want us to keep these things going. You know, there's a lot of good energy right now, there's a lot of positive energy. Mm-hmm. How can we sustain this and keep this going to other parts of our culture? Culture, our yeah. society. You know, like that's what I want to see. So these are the little examples that are coming up. Like it can be done, y'all. It can be done. I've always said, um, after change, one of the worst things to do is to revert back to how you've been doing stuff before. Right. You know, like the whole pandemic. Mm-hmm. A lot of good changes come about some of this stuff. So the worst thing for me to do is we come out of this pandemic and we, we can't go back that. to business as usual. Right. We, we did all the things we learned, we did nothing with it. That's, that's crazy to me. Mm-hmm. But now we're, we're here. This is one of those opportunities where the changing leadership, um, there is an opportunity to possibly, you know, use this out, use this. This makes me some of these changes. To right. sustain some of this, to keep some of this energy going, to keep these vibes going, mm-hmm. um, and not take these lessons, not take these last four years for granted. 
you know, there's a lot to happen. There's a lot of crazy stuff, but there's a lot we could have learned from. Right. Let's apply what we learned. Right. So it's all about adaptation. Yeah. Yeah. And just positive growth, y'all. Mm-hmm. Like I just, that's that's what my fear. So just seeing what we've been through, learn taking what we learned from that, taking taking from what we learned from the mistake, and we need to apply it to what's coming next what's happening right now yeah yeah, yeah. simple right yeah. <laughs> should be should sure some but you know we'll see so i'm, I'm that's what, i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to stay up on that man yep me too um so yeah so here we are we out of this we'll see what happens yep mm-hmm. bobs and karen's Bob's and Karen, man, what we got? I haven't, uh, besides the videos, I haven't seen too much of that stuff. Right. Um, but I did see one thing that I sent to you that was sent, yeah. that was taken down. There was a lady in line, or there were these two people in line, black man, white woman. Some altercation started happening. She hits him, and he slaps her, and... Like once once I saw the slap, I was like, ah. Yeah, well, break it down a little bit more because Karen, white Karen, right? I mean, uh, yeah. He was white, black dude, right? If I remember. Yep. Yeah. She mm-hmm. she hit him first. Yes, she did. He molly bopped her. Yeah. I mean, so <sighs> also she <laughs> called him. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay. Disclaimer: Community Coalition Let, does not condone violence from men to women. No, it does not. But <laughs> and this is a this is a very like this is a very weird but but <laughs> you just you just can't take that. <laughs> I know there's no it's not right it's not right it's not let's right. just say that <laughs> but when you but here's the thing when you go around putting your hands on people be prepared to have those hands put back on you what do you think is going to happen to you right and i think that went back to i think about that so often that goes back to the arrogance it goes back to the audacity the entitlement privilege yeah like because you, you we all know she was she going to hit him Mm-hmm. I don't think she. I don't think she expected him to go back. Mm-hmm. But also, too, you know what they bang about. We say we talk about this all the time. Mm-hmm. They try to play victim afterwards. Right. But then what do they do? They start calling the cops. They start playing the victim role. And next thing you know, my man, my man has a situation to deal with. Like, that's the crazy part. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. But when you again. When you start putting your hands on people, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. But also, too, sometimes I look at I look at those situations, and, and this is what really makes me nervous: is that yeah, it might it might be sweet to like Molly Wop somebody, mm-hmm. but they're willing to take that L. They're willing to take that L because they know the power know. that they have. Yeah. They'll take you and slap. She'll take you and punch. They'll take you and make ass beat. Mm-hmm. They get you up out of there. Mm-hmm. That's crazy to me. That, that's what's like disturbing. They'll go through great lengths. Mm-hmm. Get us up out of there. Right. Like they always play victim. It's like, they call, you they slapped me? <laughs> but then they, right call, I- call them, they call them niggas and all that stuff. Like, they did. Yeah. So it's like they do all that. They do it knowing. What that does to somebody, and then when you then they play victim. So she was willing to get slapped. Right. She put her hands on. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, she was willing to. Because for her, that's a victory. Right. Uh, so, so for for Bob's and Karen's, an ass woman is a small price to pay for a victory. Mm-hmm. Be careful, y'all. Yeah. I don't know what happened. To, I don't know what happened to the dude. I was trying to go back to the video. Yeah. But um, taken down. Be careful, y'all. Yeah. Sometimes we want to. We're human. Oh, we want to. Want to. But that short 
feeling of like gratification for us mm -hmm. um may is not may not be worth the consequences man mm -hmm. and, and again i know that sounds i know some people don't want to hear that right um and that sounds like oh you, you know you're being soft or whatever no i'm trying to right be hard. right because it goes back to what you always say the goal is to go home the goal is to go home at the end of the day Karen will take an ass whooping for you not to go home. She'll take you and slap. They'll take you and beat for mm -hmm. you not to go home. She'll proudly walk around with that black eye. For real. Be careful out there, y'all. Please. People provoking out there. They provoking out there. Mm -hmm. Especially now. We're gonna see how we're gonna see how the losing side of this election deals with it. Whew. We're gonna see how they roll with it. We're gonna see who's gonna be telling the next couple days. Are they gonna crawl back up under that hole? Also, I feel I feel very different about it now, especially since I'm like we're in the DMV area. So yeah. I'm just like I'm very like I'm very think much thinking about like oh I I mean there's always the whole I have to keep my head on the swivel, but like but also I feel like now it's like it's a little heightened. Yeah, because because emotions are high right now. Right. Yeah. Like I think it's it's still fresh for people. People emotions are still high. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll right. see. But yeah, be, but you know, again, continue to be be careful out there, y'all. Watch your back. Watch your back. Um they watch try the community's back. Yeah, I told watch you. Watch your that. community's back. Yeah. Please. They out there and they doing stuff on purpose just to promote right. what they always do. Mm-hmm. But also, uh, yeah. like Mr. Fab says, all, all skin folk and kin folk. Yeah. So yeah. be careful. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think that's that, that's it for me. That's all I got. That's that's it for me, too? That's all I got. So again, y'all know community coalition show dot com. Yep. Um, Follow us on social media. Hit us up. Yep. Check out the YouTube. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of good stuff coming. Yeah, lots of fun coming. Um, Ooh, also, check out Brie Marie's new single. Yes. It shout just out, dropped. Shout out to Brie Marie. Um, happy birthday, Cuzzo, as well. Happy birthday. Today's her birthday. Um, happy birthday. Yeah, she just dropped, dropped the new. I know the album is coming soon. Um, so, shout outs to her. Um mm -hmm. Shout out to Terry with the her, her single is keep it keep it moving. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I like the song too. I got I got a beat. Yeah. I think I was there when they recorded that one. Yeah, that was that was a good one. Yeah. Um that was nice. but you know, again, everybody black out there. Keep doing your thing. Right. Because you know, we're rooting for everybody black. We're rooting for everybody black. And I, I I who said it? Who said it when they said uh I'm not beefing with nobody black? I don't remember who Mom. said. It. Yeah, I felt that. I don't remember really, yeah, not like y'all. Not shout trying, them all. Shout them all. Not yeah. trying to get into it with people. Mm -hmm. Ain't trying to beef with people. Like even disagreements. Mm -hmm. We're gonna disagree. We're not gonna agree on everything. Even our own folks. Right. I'm walking away. Absolutely. I'm leaving my pride out of this. Trying to leave the ego out of this stuff. But black folks, man, we don't we don't need any more issues from each other. Right. We, we got a whole world out there fighting against us. Mm -hmm. So you're not gonna get no smoke from me. That you know, that's where I'm putting it down. Yeah, not me. Got, you're not gonna get nothing from me. Yeah. And also, I'm a lover, there, not a fight. Like, yeah, if I'm wronged anybody, I'm sorry. Absolutely. I am sorry too. Yeah, but then you know what? I'm, I'm we willing to say it. Like, and I think we have to get to that point where it's like sometimes you know what? If I was wrong. My bad. Right. Let's talk. Yeah. To get it right. Reach out to me, please. Yeah. You know. I'm always here to have a conversation. Let, let's start. Let's let's be on that. Let's heal. Yeah. So, till next week, y'all. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Peace. It's all love. Be safe.